Welcome to Emily's Garden. Come on out today. Welcome to Emily's Garden. Just a snap away. In this place, life is celebrated. It's the place where dreams are cultivated. Welcome to Emily's garden, just a snap. My name is Emily. Welcome to my garden. It's a place where dreams are cultivated. I have a great show planned for you today. You know, the fall season rolled in at 4.44 this morning, precisely. Looked out the window and my hydrangea bushes have turned a lovely shade of pink, telling me it's time to pick them. Join me inside and I'll show you how to make some wreaths. I've really been busy as you can see. Look at all the wreaths I've been making for this fall season. What we are really going to do today is concentrate on the hydrangea wreath. Probably the most important thing that you're going to need is to go to your closet and pull out one of these little coat hangers. And I'm sure that you have them and they usually look something like this hanging there. We're going to put them to use today. <laughs> this is the wreath base. So you can see how easy it is to form them. We're going to make a nice circle with it like so. You don't have to be too particular with it because you're not going to see the frame after we get done dressing it. The top pot I generally just hold open and press over this way. So you end up with something like this. You can make it any shape you want. You can make it into an oval, quite simply, by just pressing in the sides. Or you can make it into a rectangle. Why would you want to make a rectangle, you ask? Well, sir, you can easily cover a frame and have a really nice antique looking piece made with your hydrangea pieces. Let me get back to this. So once you're satisfied with your circle, you need to cover your hanger. And I usually use something like this. This is really and truly just a weed. It's artemisia or mugwort. Grows by the wayside. You can stop and clip some on your way home from work, which is what I did. Now the reason that you do this is so that the material that you use, and in this case we're going to be using hydrangea, will not slip as you form your wreath. You'll also notice that I use all fresh material because it makes my work much easier as I go along. I'm not working with a brittle piece. The other reason that I like to do this is it allows me to shape my flowers as I go. So again, and I snap it and bring it around simply because I don't like to waste anything. And what that also does is it gives it a little bit more girth as I work my wreath. You can see I can shape it even better now. I have used Spanish moss in the past. You don't have to use Artemisia. You could use pretty much anything. Often I'll use the same material that my wreath is made out of. 
the wreaths that are all around me are actually based with Artemisia. Okay, almost there. And you can see we're getting to this point. I just want to make sure that that's fully covered, like so. The great thing about these wreaths is they really don't cost a lot of money to make. You can see I've just gone into my closet, gotten a coat hanger, stopped at the side of the road, got some weeds. We're almost good to go. Now you'll notice that the shape is starting to turn a little bit, but I will have flexibility in one second by reshaping it. Okay. So there we go. We have a circle. A circle represents infinity. As you can see, there is no beginning. You see no ending. I also want to point this out as we go along. If I flip this over, you can see how much more uniform this looks. This really shows professionalism when you finish your wreath. You will not have any of this white showing. I've flipped it, and this is what I'm going to work. Let's talk a little bit about the hydrangea. Hydrangeas were brought to England in the 18th century, and in no time at all, their popularity spread like wildfire throughout Europe. Hydrangea paniculata grandiflora plants are flowering deciduous shrubs. In other words, they decide to shed their leaves in the fall. Hydrangeas should be planted in areas that receive morning sun and afternoon shade. They come into flower in mid to late summer and last a long time. The flower heads will take on a pinkish color before fading to tan or brown for the winter. PG hydrangeas will grow anywhere from 10 to 25 feet in height. The paniculata is the only hydrangea that can be pruned into a tree form. If you have a hydrangea shrub that you'd like to train to be a hydrangea tree, begin the process in spring by selecting the straightest stem. This will be the trunk of the tree hydrangea. Prune out the other stems and continue to do so in future years. Just stake the selected stem to provide temporary support. The hydrangea does have medicinal purposes. Native Americans use the bark of the hydrangea to ease muscle sprains and burns. It is still used today in alternative medicine as a tonic herb. The hydrangea has magical properties according to folklore. If a witch put a curse on an unlucky person, the hydrangea could be used to break the curse. The name paniculata comes from the fact that many of the blooms are panicle shaped or somewhat cone shaped rather than ball shaped. Many paniculata blooms develop a lovely pink shade as the blooms age, extending their beauty well into fall. You can see that I have some lovely blossoms. In the fall, the paniculata grandiflora, or PG hydrangea, will begin to start to turn color. The colder the weather, the more pronounced the color will become on the hydrangea. And it being the first day of autumn, I had to go and take a look, and guess what? They were ready to go. The other thing that might do it is if the plant is stressed. I'd also like to mention that within the word hydrangea, you can here hydrate. They really do require a lot of water, so if you get a really hot summer, just make sure that you give those hydrangeas a little more water. Once they're planted, they're usually pretty carefree. I have a nice panicle of hydrangea flowers here. Pull off one, and again, these are fresh. So, I will begin. I haven't cut my wire at all. And so we go. Start wrapping. Like this. I can shape them. They're very forgiving. 
there are a lot of varieties of hydrangeas out there. I wanted to center on the PG hydrangeas, but you can dry the macrophyllas, endless summers, just lovely. You can see that I'm shaping as I go. I'm going to make these a little bit wider. Now the great thing about the hydrangea that I discovered just last year is that they can be spray painted. How pretty is that? Totally changed the look. It's a little dull before. Add a little green. Just a tad. Brought new life to this wreath. So if you see a little browning like this, not to worry. Usually it just adds to the wreath, but if it should start to fade, you can just give it a little spritz. And there's a variety called Limelight that's really a very light green that doesn't tend to dry as nicely. Those are great to pick this time of year too. If they start to fade, put them in a cool, dry place away from sunlight to try to keep that down a little bit and save them for your winter decorating. You spray them gold, red, lovely on your Christmas wreaths. What I have here is Hydrangea tativa. You can see that it's a much different shape than the Paniculata grandiflora. Beautiful, beautiful blooms. A little bit different though, I generally would want to use these in a wreath like this just as an accent flower for obvious reasons. These flowers are many. Pull some more. And here we go. See how simple this is? So. Some of these are starting to get brittle. Now this is a little bit much for me, so I'm just going to take and remove it. And when I say a little much, a little bit too much browning. I used to put these on racks so that they would have some airflow, and I've found that they really dry nicely if you just lay them down on a table. It'll take about a week, 10 days. And again, at that point, I might assess them to see if they might need a little spritz of color. And I was able to find a really beautiful shade of raspberry and a light green that just blended very well with these flowers. And again, we're not using the stems. Just break them off like so. Wire comes in different gauges. I have a tendency to pull my wire quite tightly, so I try to get a little bit of a thicker gauge if I can, simply because I've been known to snap my wire. And it's okay, I mean, you can just rework it, but I try to do it all in one linear. I did this as a profession for many a year, so you can see I try to work quickly. Time is of the essence.
I've seen people try to toil with these when they were dry to make a wreath. Just not a good idea. They're very brittle, very, very brittle when they dry. Again, they will keep for a long time. Colors may fade and you can paint them. You can also spray them with a hard to hold hairspray, which will help to keep them intact. But they shouldn't really be uh, jostled around a lot. And of course, if they're on your wall, they're not going to be. You can also see that you do need a goodly amount of flowers to complete these wreaths. The hydrangea bushes are always very prolific. Okay. And you can see that the color range from this muted ivory to the darker pinks, almost bordering a mauve, really makes a lovely wreath with a bit of a Victorian look, I think. The top panicles don't really produce a lot of the blossoms. Sometimes I'll just pick that off. And again, waste not, want not. I'll just add that into the bundle. Kind of hide it a little bit. Because the hydrangea wreaths are usually pretty uniform, unlike these wreaths that you can see are kind of like all over the place. Years ago, I used to do classes. And I always got a kick out of this because I would do packages. So there'd be a package of have to figure out what you're going to use for materials, because I have 30 people coming. We'd all start with the same mediums. And at the end, you would almost be able to tell the personality of the person that was making the wreath. They'd either be very, very conformed and neat and structured, or they'd be all over the place and wild, all using the same materials totally different wreaths, totally different personalities in people. It's great to watch. Okay. We're dropping our blossoms here. Don't want to drop your blossoms. Okay. Look how pretty that is. I love the fall. And guess what? We're almost there. This one, you can almost hear it crackling, starting to dry. Still has enough flexibility, so I'm going to put it in there. Now, I actually picked these about four days ago, and I put them in a vase because I knew I was going to do this for you today. That one apparently was not in the water. I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough, so I did cut a few more this morning. And looky, looky, it looks like we are going to have enough. See, as I'm going, I'm forming my circle. And again, the same can be done if you're doing an oval or a rectangle that you want to make a frame with. See how I'm nicely covering 
the metal frame. I'm going to mix this up a little bit because I've got some faded ivory pieces here. So I think I want to bring back just so that there's a sense of balance and color. Some more mauve tones to run throughout. See what I have left. Voila. Truth of the matter is, they're all pretty no matter how they're mixed together. They really don't have to have so any set pattern and color. And again, you can do the same thing with the Max, the uh, Macrophylla or the Endless Summer varieties. I wouldn't really recommend that you did them fresh though, because they really need to be picked at the right time in order for them to dry correctly. These are easy. You know, when they've turned to the crimson mauve color that they're ready. And it looks like we're going to have probably just enough flowers. Maybe enough to make another frame if I so choose to. Beauteous. Clear out some of this debris so you can see how we end this. Very nice. So for the last piece that we put in, you can see that there's just a tiny space there. And again, we see no beginning, there is no ending, infinity. What we're going to do is just pop that just like so. My thumb is actually covering the stem so I know where to wrap it, not even looking at it. little puff here. Voila, we have achieved hydrangea wreath. See how the back looks finished? We've covered the whole coat hanger. If you don't see flowers, then you do see the artemisia, but there is no white showing from the hanger itself, which really makes it look professional. Make sure that I secure it. Cut that piece. And again, I used to in the old days just put this on a screen rack to dry so that there would be airflow. But I found that you can just hang them up and they'll be fine. Generally in a cool, dry place away from sunlight. And I do use pipe cleaners as a hanger. I would put a pipe cleaner right through the rack so that it's ready to hang. A 
just kind of feel your way through it. A lot easier on the hands and wire. Four fingers are mine. Then what I do is I hide that piece, twist it, and you're good to go. Another trick with this, especially at Christmas time, when you're doing green wreaths and you're using green wire, if you don't have the pipe cleaners, make sure that you take a piece of your ribbon and mock that wire. You'll never find it again. There you go. And I'll show you a couple that I have done. You can see how pretty they all are. If you wanted to dress this a little bit more, some fall leaves, there are some wonderful artificial flowers, mums. Some yellow tones, some orange with the fall leaves, just lovely. How pretty is that? Do a little clip. With these stems, I like to use them, so I'll make sure that I press it up. You are entering the fall, so you might want to bring that color in a little bit. I would like to show you this. How cute is that? All I did was pick up a frame. When I began, I bent my wire coat hanger so that it was the exact same size, wrapped it to recap with the artemisia, dressed my frame with the flowers, and you can see I didn't go as thickly as I did with the hydrangea wreath. And now I have a beautiful piece. I can insert a picture or use for a sign at Farmer's Market where I'm going to sell all of these. I had a great time today. We part until we meet again. See you next time here in Emily's Garden. Oh, hi, Emily. Listen, um, I had a, a little hanger around here, a little white hanger, and I, I need to hang my jacket up. Do you know where that went? Um, yeah, I just want to hang my jacket up. I, it was a white hanger, you know, it was very nice, kind of new, brand new hanger. Oh, uh, oh, you put it in the wreath. Oh, oh. So, okay, so, what well, can I put my jacket on the wreath for a minute? Oh, all right, yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah, no, that's good. No, that holds it good, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's good. No, no, it's fine. Fine, but yeah, okay. No, no, Emily, please don't, don't worry about it. No, it's fine. It's just that it was like such a great hanger, you know, it was like perfect. Um, I'm sure I'll find another one, probably, maybe not as nice as that one, but um, no, I'm, I'm <clears throat> no, 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 not a problem. No, not a problem, Emily. No, this is good. No, I'm sure I'll find another one. Uh, oh, yeah, one other thing. Um, I had some flowers, you know, those uh, hydrangeas. Do you know? Uh, I, I had a nice little uh, pile of them for my, for my grandmother who's in the hospital right now. Oh, okay. Oh, they're on the hanger, okay. No, no problem. No, I, I'm good. I'm good. No, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll find some flowers. No, it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it, Emily. Hey, these things look nice. Oh, these wreaths are beautiful. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get one from you and I'll, I'll give one of these wreaths to my grandma. She would love that. I think she would. Yeah, yeah. And when she's done with it, I can straighten out the hanger and, you know, get the hanger back. Yeah, this is a lovely wreath. Thank you. I think she's going to really like it. No, not a problem, no, no. <laughs> hey, don't you have a television show? So these wreaths are going to be on your new show, right? Like, wow. <clears throat> I'm going to call my, all my friends and tell them that my hang is on television. <laughs>